Some people like lifted trucks. Others prefer to go the other way. Now, if you're the second type of person, then this build is for you. This is our Lo-Fi S10. And no matter how low you want to go, this truck will get you there. Oh boy. We started out with a bone stock 95 S10 with the goal to build a period correct throwback mini truck. From the billet wheels, to the custom front and rear suspension, to the absurd audio system, Whoa. we think we hit the nail on the head with this one. So if you prefer your trucks dragging the street, you're gonna wanna stay in your seat for this one. The full build on our S10 mini truck starts now. You're watching Power Nation. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Mark Christ. And I'm Eric Smart. Yeah, and you know, we just wrapped up on a really huge build, our 1985 K10 square body, the Faux Guy. We started out with a really solid truck and took it down to the bare frame so that we could rebuild it from the ground up. After some final touches and a little bit of bling, we took it out and put some miles on it. And even though I'm not a Chevy guy, I have to say I'm really happy how this truck turned out. Yeah, that thing was great, it was beautiful, but we do eventually have to move on to something else, but I don't know how to top that. I was gonna say, what do you wanna build next? I'm fresh out of ideas. I mean, there's nothing better than a jacked up square body. Okay, well, obviously we need to do something a little different, right? Right. And it's always good to step out of your comfort zone. Okay. And that includes me too. And, you know, it never hurts to get a little inspiration from some other people uh -oh. and some other builds. Check this out. Oh, we got some mini trucks in here. Yes, sir. So mini trucks started in the 50s, but primarily in North America. We started seeing them in the 70s. The gas crisis really drove a demand for a more fuel efficient vehicle. Just parking spaces were becoming smaller. Of course, people have been customizing vehicles since vehicles existed, and a community sort of developed around mini trucks and customizing them. With mini trucks being produced and imported and or produced domestically, uh, it wasn't long before people wanted an entry level way to customize their vehicle and the mini truck is a perfect platform. Just like, you know, 50 years ago, the Deuce Coupe you could have for 50 bucks. You can pick up a mini truck for not a lot of money these days and start making it your own. One of the beauties of mini trucking and, and customizing a mini truck is that there aren't many rules. So you want to have aftermarket wheels, typically air suspension or hydraulic. Definitely need a theme and kind of like Purple Rain has a theme. Everything follows that theme with the color, with the graphics. And if you're really wanting to go to that level, then it's difficult to define until you're in the process and you're trying to finish it. Mini trucking is one of the few genres of automotive uh, enthusiasm that will promote and even award uh, a vehicle, and typically they say under construction is the class at a show where you can take your truck if it's in primer or if you don't have custom wheels yet or any other thing that you might want to do that's not finished, um, you can still participate and even win an award at a show. Mark, this is a 92 Chevrolet S10 that I drive every day. It's full air suspension from Thorbeck, tubbed in the bed with bed liner. Very nice. Original paint. Love it. All the dents. Original interior too, it looks like. Yes, sir, basically. Air suspension controls in the center, aftermarket steering wheel. So this truck, you didn't do a body drop, right? No, just no, this is just lace frame, just frame. Notch the frame, clearance in the bed with the tubs, and uh, control arms in the front. Let's see under the hood. All right, let's do it. Oh, small block. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't expect that. It moves out of its own way. Yeah, it's basically stock, but that's enough for this little truck, yep. right? Perfect, original fuel injection, modified to run the V8 with a computer and a chip and a Pretty healthy cam. So Brad, this thing looks awesome. I don't even know where to start. I mean, tell us about it. Yes, sir, it's a 97 Chevrolet S10. Start off completely bone stock. It is bagged, obviously. Complete tubbed out, bags over axle. 22 inch billet specialty wheels. Full custom paint. Full blown custom interior by big body, all leather and Mercedes carpet, 
also with a suicide door. And the truck is also traditionally body dropped three and a half inches uh, by side panels to raise the floorboard up for the truck to go lower than just laying frame. And that's how you got it all the way down on the ground. Yes, sir, that's how we got it. That is awesome. This thing is just gorgeous. Let's see what's under the hood. Wow, that is the cleanest four cylinder I have ever seen in one of these things. I appreciate it. It's all uh, bed lined wheel tubs. Uh, the bottom of the hood is all skinned. Uh, bead rolled panels, paint powder coated everything. Michigan Metal Works uh, upper and lower control arms, little shop steering linkage kit with QA one front shocks. So there is nothing on this truck that hasn't been touched. That's right. Man, that is Woo. insane. So I know your truck drives. Oh yes. Daily. This isn't a trailer queen, is it? No. What do you say we uh, hop in the truck, the four of us, and go out for a cruise? After all, that's what mini trucking is all about, right? That's right. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's catch lunch. Coming up next, we go cruising with our new friends, and they help us lay out the plans for our next build. Man, I'm glad we decided to head out for a cruise today, and I'm even more glad that you guys came by with these trucks. You know, I've never been a real big fan of mini trucks, but these are pretty cool, and I think I'm starting to feel a little bit of inspiration for our next build. Yeah, this truck is just a great cruiser. It's great to have a mini truck also because it doesn't have to be a thrash type build. You can do a modification and then drive it to work on Monday. Yeah. Yeah, incremental build. Right. I think that that's another point to make too about these and to really respect the mini trucking community because you mentioned earlier about, you know, the in progress or under construction builds. Oh yes. That that's not only accepted, but promoted. Like, hey, bring bring your under construction build and you could win an award. Right, like we want to see what you're working on. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. I think, I think that's going to be a big part of this resurgence of mini trucking that's starting to go on now is it's going to be a lot of the older guys who were getting into it when it was big in the early 2000s yeah. and they're they're still going to have these old projects because you got you know you put all this time and effort into something you don't want to just get rid of it if you're talking about somebody somebody who's never built a mini truck before where would you tell them to start for someone who's never done it it's hard to go wrong with an s10 right there's tons of aftermarket support. A lot of guys prefer the second generation. It's more rounded off and, and modern looking than the first generation. So obviously you're saying S10. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I mean it's. Is there just that, like why? I mean, is there just that many of them out there? Price point, aftermarket support? All, all those reasons. You talk about, you know, the heydays of mini trucking, I mean, if you didn't go cruise Second Avenue on Saturday night, you, you were doing it wrong. Gotta have fun, right? That's what it's all about, right? Well, Brad's truck is over the top, insane. Uh, all I the mean, things. All the things. But I guarantee you, because he's a mini trucker, if you ask him, he, he has at more. least one, he has at least one more thing in mind. Yeah. At least one. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That's that's that. part of it. The possibilities are endless oh, with cars these days. I mean, if you can think of doing it, then odds are done. you can make it happen. Yeah, I've always been more of a lifted truck guy, but I think this this would definitely be a fun one. Oh yeah. Well, I think the S10 would be a really good platform for this because I mean, they're, they're easy to find, they're cheap, parts availability is great. And I mean, it, it's just a cool old truck. You know, they're what, some of the most reliable things ever built. So you really can't go wrong with, you know, throwing some modifications on there and making it something cool. I mean, I've never done anything like this before, but I don't know, maybe maybe me and Mark might do one of these someday. Yeah. It might be fun. Well, I want to tell you, I didn't tell Eric because it's going to be a big surprise, but I found us a second gen S10 probably exactly what Brad's truck looked like before he started his build. You might need a paramedic when you tell him. I mean, he might have a heart attack. He's the, he's the off-road guy, right? Yeah, I mean, he's a square body, big big truck kind of guy, yeah. Uh, I think you, I think you might win him over on this one. Yeah, I think I think we might be able to do a little something with it, but 
Might have to do a little bit of convincing with Mark. Yeah, yeah. that's typically how it goes. So let's just say we're, we're gonna build that truck. Where do we start? Like, what are, what are some, some things that we need to grab? Uh, well, clearly you need a nice set of wheels. You gotta do something to lower it. Yeah. It's two wheel drive, right? Yep. Yep. You gotta have air suspension. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think I know a guy who can help you with that. Probably even has some parts already sitting there. Okay, speaking my language. And I think, I think that's one of the things that really sets many truckers aside from other types of, you know, car and truck enthusiasts is you guys just appreciate what you've got. Yeah. It's all about the build, not so much about the final product. Well, this has been a, been a great experience and I, I really appreciate you guys coming out. And... Likewise, it's, uh, it's always good to go ride some back roads, make new friends. Absolutely. Well, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. Amen to that. Thank you guys for bringing your trucks out. Yes, this sir. has been a blast. Um, let's just say I'm inspired. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I've got some ideas. I think we need to go shopping. Yeah, I think we need to go back to the shop and put uh, pen to paper. Inspired, but, right? Inspired, totally. Inspired. I want to ride in that truck, though. Oh, Come on. I got to take a ride in this thing. Can I ride back to the shop in that? Let's go. Let's All right. Go. Let's Hop in. It. It's been a good day. Next up, we dive into a driveway rescue on a truck that has a very unique personality. Well, we've got our work cut out for us, that's for sure. Well, we're back on the road and we're in the Rock Auto driveway rescue van because we're gonna do a little rescue. But this isn't going to be for someone else. We are going to be rescuing our own truck. Can you guess what we're doing a driveway rescue on? Well, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be a small truck. Um, what are we talking, Mazda B-Series, Ford Ranger, S10? 1995 Chevy S10. I don't wanna go into too many details about the truck. Just kinda let it speak for itself when you see it. But I will say this, the truck is in need of some work and I've already made a deal on the truck. It's ours. All right. So we're officially building ourselves a mini truck. This is definitely a project. Is that it right there? Yeah, the white one. Oh boy. It's got good bones, as they say. Well, we've got our work cut out for us, that's for sure. All right, let's take a look at this thing. Woo! Fancy. That is something else. Well, it's not what I expected. <laughs> Here's what I like about this truck. Super solid, straight truck. Gotta ignore all of the you know, the accessories, but other than that, it's a really good base and also under the hood. Oh, wow. So it's got the 4.3, which is nice, but it looks like it has been maintained for the most part mechanically. The issues right now is it will not start, which I think could just be a battery. Uh, and then it has a pretty significant cooling leak or two. I think we should just dig in and start, uh, see, well, let's see if we can get it running first. Yeah, let's get after it. Let me grab the jump box. All right, give it a shot. All right. Well, that was easy enough. Can you look under there and see if the coolant's dripping at all? Yeah, it looks like just a little bit right down the front. Okay, well, that'd be a good place to start. And then, uh, you know, let's put a battery in it later. Let's just start tearing into the cooling system. I got a bunch of stuff here from Rock Auto, so I'll awesome. do a little inventory. All right, well, I knew this thing had a coolant leak issue, so I went and got a little bit of everything from Rock Auto for this. Um, in no particular order, a new fan clutch, because anytime you have the fan off, it's always a good idea to replace those. Uh, hoses, of course, the water pump itself, a couple of gallons of 50-50 coolant, uh, some hose clamps, thermostat, uh, and then just for good measure, a radiator. If we're gonna pull the radiator out anyway, um, it's probably the original radiator by looking at it. So we'll get it out, go ahead and put a new one in it. That way we don't have any problems with the cooling system. Let's get this coolant drained. While the coolant's draining, I'm pulling the fan shroud out. Get that out of the way. 
Oh, that radiator has been replaced. Look at that. Surprise. Oh, look, the hose clamp came apart. <laughs> <laughs> the hose clamp said, no more, we're done. So we can get the radiator hoses off, get everything disconnected from the radiator. We can get the radiator out of the way. That hose is soft. You wanna look for the space between the two blades. It's a little bit bigger than the rest of them. They actually do that. So you've got room to get in and work on these things. I'm just gonna get these broke loose here. Then we should be able to get them off by hand. Now that the fan and water pump pulley are loose, I'll remove the serpentine belt by relieving the tension. Now that should come off nice and easy. Now that we got all the lines and hoses disconnected, I think we can go ahead and pull this radiator out. All right, just a couple of bolts here and we'll have this water pump off. Well, I don't like the way it was sealed, but the worst part, all this white right here is where the coolant started coming out of the weep hole. Get it cleaned up and uh, start putting it back together. Coming up, we get a feel for how this S10 drives. Up front, we're gonna modify and plate the A-arms. We finally reveal our plans for our upcoming project. Well, we're plugging away on our Rock Auto driveway rescue that we're doing on our S10. We got everything torn down and cleaned up. It's time to put this thing back together. Well, we got this new water pump from Rock Auto. Got it ready to go with the studs put in. So now it's time to drop it in the truck. Okay, so we're just gonna get these gaskets preset on here. That way we don't have to worry about it. And then once those are set, we'll throw a little bit of RTV on the end of these bolts because they run through coolant passages in there. And once you've got all your RTV on, you can go ahead and snug everything up, make sure the gaskets stayed in place, and then tighten it down. With the water pump bolts tight, we'll install the heater hose nipple. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and get our water outlet and thermostat put in. Well, the previous owners didn't mention anything about this thing overheating before we bought it, but since we're already in here and this thing is pretty nasty, we're gonna go ahead and replace it with a brand new one anyways. Once we get this thermostat put in, then we can go ahead and throw our radiator back in here. All right, brand new radiator. This thing in here, we'll have ourselves a brand new entire cooling system. Fits right in. Let's get that lower shroud. There we go. Very nice. Go ahead and get these lines attached. This one's got a oil cooler and a trans cooler built in. So you gotta make sure when you order it, that you get the right one. So while Mark's finishing up that radiator, I'm gonna go ahead and get the fan blades installed on this new clutch that we got here. So if you're ever not sure which way your fan is supposed to go, you just wanna look and see how that lines up with the fitment on the clutch here. And that lines up with the bolts. And so it's gonna go on just like this. All right, now that we got that done, let's go see how Mark's doing up front. How's it going up here? Oh. Perfect timing. Awesome. Got all the cooler lines attached, got the heater hose on there, got the lower hose already on there and tight. So once you get that on, it's just from there up, this thing will be ready. I'll go get the coolant. Let's get her done. With the fan and clutch in place, we can reinstall the belt. All right, and then with a belt like this, if you've got a pulley that has a little bit of extra room, you always want to look straight down the belt and make sure it's riding straight. Time for the upper shroud followed by the upper hose. It's time to add some coolant. Get the air out of the system. Take this thing for a drive. All right, well, we got it all bled. Everything looks good. Just got the cap on there. Ready to take this thing for a ride. And you know what? I'm gonna let Eric drive. You know, I don't know if we should aim, you know, for the moon with this build. No, we don't, we don't need this thing putting rockers on the ground, but 
to at least be able to lay frame, I think that'll get us into a good spot with the rest of the mini truckers out here. We're starting with our S10 in completely stock form with its coil spring independent front suspension and leaf sprung rear. Up front, we're gonna modify and plate the A-arms, ditch the springs and shocks, and in place of the coil spring, we're gonna install the airbags. Remote shock mounts will finish it off. Out back, we'll ditch the leaf spring setup and install a full back half bolt-on five-link kit with bags. Out back, we're gonna make room by sectioning the bed to allow the axle to tuck up in between the inner wheel tubs. Then we'll box it all in. Inside the bed will be all of the air suspension supporting components like the compressor and tank. We'll be installing a subwoofer box in the bed along with supporting amplifiers. And to carry the sound into the cab, we'll do a blow through. Inside the cab, our S10 will get a pair of bucket seats and custom console, which will house all of the controls for our stereo and air suspension. To finish it all off, we'll top the bed with a tonneau cover, add a custom grill, and then give our Mini a custom paint job to make it stand out in true Mini truck fashion. Lastly, we'll add a set of billet wheels and matching tires before we take this thing out for its first outing as a proper Mini truck. Today on Music City Trucks, we get started on transforming our 95 Chevy S10 into a real Mini truck by tearing it down and making it a half a truck. Plus, we get a crash course on a new machine that'll make finishing this project a breeze. <laughs> this has got to be the most iconic design. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Eric Smart. And I'm Mark Christ. And in case you didn't know it, we've got ourselves an S10. I think that's good right there. If you didn't see what we did to it last time, well, we got some big plans for this truck. Check it out. We're starting with this S10 in completely stock form with coil spring independent front suspension and a leaf spring rear. Today, we're gonna be ditching the leaf spring setup in favor of a full back half bolt-on five-link kit. Then, we're gonna make room for the new frame by sectioning the bed allowing the notch and axle to tuck up inside the inner wheel tubs. Then we're gonna box it all in. Well, obviously we've got our work cut out for our S10 mini truck here. I'm really looking forward to it though, because I think this is gonna be a really cool build. It's gonna be a lot of fun to do, and it's gonna be a lot of fun when it's done. Uh, but as you can see, the leaf spring setup that's on this truck from the factory is not gonna cut it. Actually, I think this truck's been lowered a little bit in the front and the rear. Um, but back here, basically it's already has a flip kit done on it from the factory, the axle sits above the leaf. So unless you put some blocks in there, you're really not gonna get any more out of this. And besides, if you do, you'll have to notch the frame. Uh, static drops, probably not the best way to go on this. Air suspension is gonna be an obvious choice. And in order to get where we need to be, we're gonna have to make some major changes back here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Well, you folks probably remember Ben Osborne with Buddy's Garage. You know, he was our mini truck expert when we got ready to launch this project. Well, he had everything that you see here on the floor. Now, keep in mind, he's been in business since 1995. So he's got some new old stock stuff laying around from way back in the day. And that's exactly what this is. This kit's not available anymore. It is a complete bolt-in back half five link suspension for our S10. It comes with everything you need to get it installed. Uh, you just have to cut the frame off. That's the, the tricky part. But after that, when you go to reinstall all of this, it's actually pretty simple. This is more of a DIY kit. Uh, now you could piece all of these things together on your own with a notch. Of course, you'll have to piece that in and weld it in where this one bolts in. Same thing with the control arms and the bag mounts and things like that. So this is all complete, gonna go right in the truck nice and easy. Now when we get to the front, that's gonna be a little more in depth. Um, it's gonna be a little more techy, but we'll get to that later on for now. We would just wanna focus on this. This is a really cool kit. Very excited about getting this installed, but before we can get any of this on the truck, we need to do some teardown. We're gonna start with getting the bed unbolted so we can pull that off. Then we'll move on to the fuel system and the rear suspension so that we can get all that out of the way.
Now that we got our bed unbolted from the truck, we're gonna hook up our bed lifter to the crane and pull this thing the easy way. This poor truck doesn't know what it's in for. No, I don't think it does. <laughs> well, now that that bed's off of there, it'll be a lot easier to get this fuel tank out of the way. With the truck back in the air, we can now pull our drive shaft and fuel tank. Oof, stinky. Let's get this thing outside. Last but not least, we remove the rear end and all the suspension components. Hey, Gabby, how's it going? Good, how are you doing, Mark? Good. Good. You folks probably remember Gabby from Forney, and she always brings us cool tools. And I can see here you have a really compact new machine here. What is this thing? Yeah, so this is our Flex 30. So this is actually Forney's first machine that we've put a plasma cutter and a welder together. So it's a stick TIG plasma machine. It's a 30 amp plasma and a 160 amp stick TIG machine. Um, it will cut up to 3 8 and as well as weld up to 3 8 Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, another cool feature on this machine is it is dual voltage, so you can run it on 240 or 120 volts. Okay, cool. Well, just so happens, we've got some cutting that needs to be done. Awesome. Let's get over here. I'll Let's show you what we're talking about. Let's go ahead and do it. About. Eric, like for you to meet Gabby. Gabby, this is Eric. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Eric. And I trust that uh, the truck's in good hands. Oh, yeah. We'll take care of it. Okay. Don't worry. So what do we got here? Yeah, so this is our Forney Flex 30. So uh, we're just going to worry about the plasma right now. So we'll go ahead and cut. What, are we just going to cut a couple of brackets or something? Or what do we got going on? No, this, uh, this whole frame right here, that's got to get on the ground. Oh. All right, let's do it. So have you ever plasma cut before? It's been quite a while. All right, cool. Well, I'll teach you how to use ours. So you have a safety here, so you have to be underneath that safety. And then you have this little ring. Um, that's just a guide, so it'll help you go along. But with this plasma, you are going to make contact with the tip. So we'll start the arc off the side, and then we'll run it over here. Think you can handle it? Oh, yeah. All right. Here you go. Wait, are you sure about this? No. All right. Next up, we finish our tear down in the rear, then reassemble our frame. But before we bolt it in tight, we got to put those plates on the back side, too. So now that we got half of our frame cut off, we got to put it back together. But before we can do that, there's some parts that still have to get removed. And those parts were riveted in from the factory, so we got to get those rivets out to be able to put our new stuff in. Now, there's a lot of different ways to remove rivets, but we're going to show you two ways that we like to use around here to try and make it just a little bit easier. Let's get to it. All you're going to do here is nice and easy. You're just going to take this cutoff wheel, and you're going to grind that head right off of there. Once you've got your head ground off, you're gonna stick your punch right there and then just give it a few good hits. So our next method, we're gonna use a die grinder to cut an X into the head of this rivet and then we're gonna take our air hammer and hammer it off of there that way. So now that we've got the frame stripped down with everything removed, before we install our new kit, we're going to go ahead and clean this all off. That way we can put fresh corrosion protection down to make sure we're not going to get any rust on the original frame rails and the pieces that we're adding on. Well, now that the frame is nice and clean and I'm sufficiently dirty, we're gonna go ahead and spray some undercoating on there before we get those frame members on. It's important to make sure to do this so you don't have any rust form on the original frame underneath of the new pieces. So before we roll this axle back underneath our truck, we need to get it cleaned up some. And there's also some stuff that needs to come off of it because we're definitely not reusing these leaf springs. In 
order to get this axle ready to go back under the truck later, we're spraying it down with a liberal amount of degreaser, followed by some serious pressure washing. So with the frame cleaned up and recoated, before we can put those new frame members on, we have to drill out a couple of holes so that we can get a few bolts in and line everything else up to drill the rest of the holes. This step bit makes quick work of boring out these holes. Now that we have our alignment holes done, Mark and I are lining up the new frame rail that we got from Ben. That's the one right there. Sweet. With a little persuasion, the frame rail is on so we can snug it down and drill the rest of our holes. We're using C-clamps to make sure the rail can't shift while we do the rest of our drilling. With everything drilled out, it's time to bolt this together permanently. This might look like overkill, but you want to make sure this will handle all the motion from our air suspension, as well as anything the road might throw at it. Now that both of the frame rails are bolted down, we can move on to installing the rest of this kit. And with that, the truck has a full frame again. Coming up, you know what an S10 driver's favorite kind of music is? Uh, rocks. We sling some sparks to get this bed prepped for our new notched frame. Well, now that we've got our frame reassembled, this thing's ready for the axle to get back underneath of it. Now, before we can get this axle installed, there's a couple things we need to get installed onto it first. Eric did a really good job getting it all cleaned up. Leafs are out of the way. Now we just need to get these brackets installed. This is actually gonna bolt where the leaf spring originally bolted. See, it's got the centering pin here. And it's gonna install using the original U-bolts, which is really convenient. And then the control arms, and the shocks will actually bolt to these brackets. So just need to get these bolted in. We'll get this into the truck. Dare I say, it's ready to go in the truck. Did that do it? There we go. Now, it seems a little weird, but because of the style of this suspension, the bags are actually gonna go back here. Just need to compress them a little bit. Get them in there. It's bags are pretty in. good. I think it's time to see how low she can go. All right, going up with it. I'll get the jack stands under there. All right, that is at two inches now. Well, we made some adjustments, and now we've got this thing at full compression, and it looks pretty wild sitting in here. Um, but it was at full droop. It was 16 and a quarter inches from the top of the backing plate to the top of the frame rest. That's 14 and a quarter inches of travel. Yeah, and that's way more than we're ever actually gonna use with this thing because obviously that frame's gonna hit the ground far before we get to here. Yep. Also, we'd have some clearance issues with the drive shaft and that's a lot more work that we're not getting into with this one. But we're gonna be able to do exactly what we want being able to lay that frame on the ground. Yeah, and then some. Uh, now we do need to start working on getting the fuel system back in. It needs shocks and things like that, but we'll get to all that later. For now, I wanna try to get this bed fit. I think it's gonna need some adjustments. Don't even need to. Hey, can you see me through there? Oh, I'd say that fits pretty good now. 
And we've got to figure out what we're going to do about filling this all in. We've got to accomplish two things. One, we've got to have enough room for all of our suspension, frame rails, and wheels and tires to fit. And then also we've got to seal it off against weather because we're going to be putting our sub box and all of our air ride controls back here. We could just make one big sheet that goes all the way across, but that might be a little cumbersome. I think we've got a better idea. And that better idea is that we got these wheel tubs from Summit. Now they are universal. They will fit anything, but we do have a pretty small truck with a pretty small bed. So we are gonna have to trim a little bit to make them fit right, but we think we can handle that. 34 and a half is our number. All right. Close this corner up. The worst part of this is definitely getting it started. Well, there's a lot of hacking going on here. I got this outer wheel tub all cut out, drilled out all the spot welds, did it the hard way. I think in hindsight, I probably just cut that whole lip off. It's probably what I'll do on the other side. Look at that. About ready to get this thing test fitted. Now that's a wheel tub. Yeah, it is. Let's try it. Oh yeah, we're definitely gonna have to cut a little bit out back here. Yeah, we'll have to notch it up here, but a little trimming. Oh yeah, be in business. And I think we're in pretty good shape now. Oh yeah, that's gonna look nice. We'll move on to that other side. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah, that looks great. We can get it tacked in, throw some sealer on there and call more, it a day. A little more bed liner. Yeah. Our mini truck's coming along. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not quite done yet though. Still got the front to do. Yeah. We'll do that next time. All right. Let's call it a day. Today on Music City Trucks, we get our S10 one step closer to becoming a true mini truck by modifying our front suspension. Plus, we'll add a top of the line air control kit that can be controlled with an app. And you can be standing across the parking lot and you can still air out. iconic design. Hey, welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Mark Christ. And I'm Eric Smart. And we're here again with this 95 S10 that is coming along pretty nicely. Yeah, and if you can't tell by looking at this, we're building ourselves a mini truck. And if you're just joining us, well, we got big plans for this build. Check it out. We started with our S10 in completely stock form with its coil spring independent front suspension and leaf springs in the back. We ditched the leaf spring setup to install a full back half bolt on five link kit. We made room for the new frame by sectioning the bed, allowing the notch and the axle to tuck up in between the inner wheel tubs. Then we boxed it all in. Inside the bed will be the air suspension supporting components like the compressor and tank. Up front, we're gonna be modifying and plating the A-arms, ditching the springs and shocks, and putting in air springs instead. Once we install the bags, remote shock mounts will finish it off. But there's like something missing back here still. It might be a bed. <laughs> well, I still got some stuff I need to do on the bed, so I'm gonna go work on that now. All right, now while Mark's doing that, this rear suspension is done. It looks very complicated, but the kit made it super easy. It was all bolt in and it's just about ready to go. But before we're ready to put wheels back on this thing and get it rolling, we gotta do the front and that's not gonna be quite so easy. But thankfully, we've got an expert to help us out with that. For someone who's never done it, it's hard to go wrong with an S10. You may remember Ben Osborne, who is a mini truck expert that helped to inspire us to build a mini truck ourselves in the first place. He also supplied us with our rear suspension kit that you saw last time. We brought him back into the studio to get his expert opinion on modifying our front suspension. And Ben, we got your parts installed. What do you think? They look great. I think I couldn't have done a better job myself, Eric. Well, we appreciate that. We appreciate the parts and we appreciate you coming in to help today. So today, like I said before, we're gonna be working on our front suspension. Now that is a little bit different from the rear. It's not just cutting the frame off and bolting some new stuff on. We need to do a little bit of modification this time. So that's what Ben's here for. And Ben, what's, what's our first step to getting this taken care of? Well, the first step to any good project is tearing it down. Let's do it. All right, let's go. 
First, we need to remove the calipers and rotors to get them out of the way. Then we can move on to the tie rods, ball joints, and everything else to get this spindle out. All right, let's see how easy this wants to come out. Easy enough. Now that we've got both ball joints disconnected and get this drop spindle out of the way, we're gonna take this spring out of here. See if you can push the arm down at all. A uh, little bit, not much though. There, there it goes. You go. All right, now let's get these control arms out of here. And it seems like Mark always disappears during the dirty part of this thing. What do they call that, seniority? <laughs> Yep, that's all we got left in here is just pop this upper control arm out and then I think we're ready to go take a look at the new stuff. You have to pull the uh, bolts out, don't you? Um, if you don't have clearance to move the shaft off of them, yes. Yeah. All right, well, that about does it for the front, so let's go check out the new stuff. So now that we've got our front suspension torn apart, we've got all of our old parts here and most of this is just gonna get thrown away. Now, we are gonna be reusing the shocks because they didn't look too bad. And the truck already had these drop spindles on it and we're gonna be reusing those too. That way, we don't have to buy new ones. Now, over here, we've got some OE style Duralast control arms that we found on the AutoZone Pro website. So, Ben, what are we doing with these things instead of, say, some tubular control arms? Well, Eric, a few reasons. Tubular arms are expensive and Rebuilding the original arms with ball joints and bushings is a lot of labor. So we can start fresh, we can modify these lower control arms so that these areas don't hit the frame and we have clearance and mounting for the air spring. Eric, the first thing we'll do is I'm gonna mark where we need to cut for clearance. Almost like you've done this before. Once or twice. This might look pretty precise, but you don't have to be too exact because you're still gonna have to touch it up and do some fitting before you weld the plates in. All right, well, now that we've got those cut out, it's time to clean them up a little bit with a flap disc and uh, we'll get a template made. All right, well, I think those are just about ready to go. Uh, ben, I don't think that'll hold a bag. You're right, Eric, it won't. So how about you go cut me a couple of these out of metal? Now that we've got our template made, we're gonna trace it onto a sheet of 3 16 steel. Then we'll fire up our 40 Flex 30 again to get these things cut out. Well, there's plate number one. Coming up next, we break out the plasma cutter and welder and finish up our modifications to the front end. All right, well, we've got our plates cut and fitted, so now it's time to get them tacked up, welded in, and then we'll be ready to fit the bags. To make sure that we don't warp the metal or the control arm, I'm gonna weld in opposite corners of the plate. We've got the plates welded on to both of our control arms now, so that means there's only a little bit more left to do before we're ready to get back over to the truck, do a little bit more clearancing, and start putting everything back together. But first thing before we get these painted and cleaned up, we gotta find center down here in place of the factory coil spring so that we can mount our bag. We got a single bolt hole here, and we're gonna drill two holes and connect them to make a slot. That way our bag has a little bit of adjustment on the bottom in case we need to change it up a little bit. So, in order to find center on here, all you're gonna do is take a straight edge, go across the factory coil spring seat, right in the middle, take a, a scribe, scratch you a mark right there, then you're gonna do the same thing, go in the other direction, right in the middle. Scratch a mark, and you're ready to drill. All right, well, we got our control arms done. Uh, what you been up to over here? Well, nice job on those. While you were busy, I cleaned up the frame and marked it for your clearance cuts because when the air springs in here, we don't want anything to puncture it or rub on it. And because the air spring's now in the way, we can't mount our shock in its original location. So we're gonna hang it on this side of the frame. To do that, I started with a template. Okay. And then I fabbed you up some brackets. Awesome. 
Well, that'll save me a little bit of work, but I guess I got the rest of it cut out for me, don't I? You better break out that plasma. All right. It's a little tricky cutting in these tight spots, but we'll come back and clean it all up. Oh, I think that looks pretty good. What about you? I agree. Let's check it out with the bag. Oh, yeah. Plenty of clearance. I don't think you'll have any issues on the road. We're going to start with the lower control arm so that we can finish mounting the bag. Well, we're, we're close. Oh, there we go. All right, that'll hang for a minute. Looking good. Yeah, we're, we're in pretty good shape so far. Perfect. Oh, that is nice. Be interesting to see what happens when we get that upper and the spindle in. We'll finish installing the upper control arm and then we can wrap up the front suspension. There's the first one. Just get the second one in, get it nutted down. Yeah, in that case, put in all the shims. Yeah. All right. So before we put the knuckle back in, we wanted to show the difference between a drop spindle and a stock spindle and why we're going to be reusing this instead of putting a new stock spindle in it. Now, on the stock steering knuckle, the spindle itself sits lower towards the lower ball joint mount. On a drop spindle, it sits higher, kind of in between the upper and lower. Now, you might think that's a little bit counterintuitive, but when you raise the spindle, you actually put your wheel hub higher off the ground, which brings the rest of the truck down. So you get about two inches of lowering in the front with this, and without that drop, we wouldn't be able to lay frame. So we're gonna get this cleaned up a little bit, and we're gonna reuse these old ones. All right. We're getting pretty close here, I think. Agreed. Not much left. We're gonna have to get shorter links. Nah. Looks like you're about done, Eric. Just about. I mean, I gotta tighten a couple things up and get the brakes on, but I can do that later. I know you're a busy man, you don't have all day. Is there anything else I'm gonna have to modify before we can lay this thing out? I got a few things for your punch list. I brought you a steering kit that'll resolve the tow issues you're gonna have when the truck's really low. You wanna raise the exhaust so it doesn't drag the ground. You wanna modify the transmission cross member, and get it above the scrub line. All right, awesome. I think we can take care of that. Now, once again, Ben Osborne, owner of Buddy's Garage. You've been a huge help today, and I can't wait to show you this thing when we're done with it. I'm glad to help, and I'm excited to see it. Next up, we get crafty and begin installing our new air control system. I went ahead and made us a template. That way, we can get both of these in the exact same spot. Well, we've got ourselves a mini truck. Well, almost. Uh, we've got bags on all four corners on our S10 now, and it's time to, well, kind of finish the install of the suspension, which we've got to get air in the bags and air back out of the bags. and. It's gonna be a little bit of work, but that's what we're gonna tackle next. So when you're building an air suspension kit, obviously you have a lot more to consider than just the bags. Now, we went to Summit Racing to look at some options for controlling those bags, because you still have to get the air in and out of them. Now, there's a lot of options as you can see here, and we wanted to show you a couple of them, just so that you know what you're getting into when you try to build a kit like this for yourself. At the base level, you've got this kit right here. It is all inclusive, everything that you need to get your suspension to function. Now, it comes with your valve block, you've got your controls, your gauges, all your plumbing and your wiring, plus dual compressors and a five gallon air tank. This is a kit from Ride Tech, and it will get you doing exactly what you wanna do with your air suspension. But if we wanna take your kit up to the next level, well, you could upgrade to something like this. Now, everything that you see here is just the controls. It's got an ECU, it's got a little touch screen here, all of the wiring to get it all working. Basically, all of this does everything that this does. It's a little more complicated and quite a bit more expensive, but what's nice about this is you could just piece together the rest of the kit on your own, or if you have an existing kit like this in here that Eric just showed you, you could buy this kit to upgrade it to take it to the next level. Or you could get this, the AccuAir Ultimate E-Level Plus onboard air suspension control kit. At first glance, it might look a lot like that first kit that we showed you, but it's a lot more in-depth than that. So it is still dual compressor, five-gallon tank, 
and all of your plumbing and wiring. But instead of having your valves separate, they're actually contained inside this tank right here. Now that frees up a lot of space when you're trying to set a kit like this up. It also comes with ride height sensors for all four corners. You've got your controller here, your ECU, and if that's not cool enough, you have an app on your phone as well that you can control all of this from pretty much anywhere. It's got long range Bluetooth connectivity and you can be standing across the parking lot and you can still air out. Now, this is what we're gonna end up putting into our truck because we want all the cool features that this thing offers. So let's get to it. The first step to getting this AccuAir kit installed is gonna be getting our compressors and our tank bolted down. Now that's gonna be the bulk of this kit aside from all the plumbing and wiring that we'll worry about later. So to do that, we're gonna try and make it look really nice. We're gonna mount our first compressor on this side of the bed right here. We're gonna mount the tank to that tunnel in the middle. And then the second compressor is gonna get mounted as a mirror image of the first one on the other side so we can keep everything nice and symmetrical. So let's get to it. I went ahead and made us a template. That way we can get both of these in the exact same spot. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna get this set up here, the outside bracket of it towards the outside of the compressor. It stops right at the edge of it. We're gonna leave a little bit of room back here for the compressor housing to actually sit and not be outside of this lip right here. Mark this corner, we're back in our lines, and then we just mark all the holes. Time to move on to the tank. Let's see about getting this tank fitted. This kit did come with a template, but I decided to make my own using tape because this surface has a slight curve to it, and I wanna make sure it's gonna stay in place while I'm marking and drilling. this tape off and make sure these brackets fit. Mm. Nice. All right, now that we got the brackets tightened down, it's time to see how this tank fits. So far, so good. Oh yeah, good stuff. Okay, well, now that we've made it this far, all I've got left to do back here in the bed is do the same thing on the passenger side as I did over here on the driver's side, get the second compressor installed, and then we get to move right along to everybody's favorite part of something like this and do all of the lovely plumbing and wiring. Coming up, we'll pull some strings and show you just how simple it is to make your own airlines, and we put our new suspension to the test. Well, we have our compressors and our AccuAir tank mounted here in the bed, which means we're really close to getting this thing back on its own four tires for the first time since it came in here. Now, we do still have to get air in and out of our air bags to be able to do that. So we're gonna start back here, drill a couple holes in this nice fresh bed liner, run our air compressors into our frame mounted tank underneath, and then we're gonna run two more lines from there into the AccuAir tank up here in the bed. So. We get to spend a whole lot of time drilling holes in this fresh bed liner. These factory lines on our air compressors are pretty nice, but we want everything to match and we can't make any more of these. So we're gonna make our own AN lines. Now we have to measure for that because those aren't long enough. And I don't feel like trying to run the AN line itself to mark it and cut it. So what we're gonna do instead, we're gonna do it with string. First off, when you're measuring for a line with string, you're gonna tape it off at your start point and then anywhere along the route where it's gonna make a bend. You're gonna tape it in place so that you can get a good estimate for how long your line needs to be. So we're running through the bed. I've already got it taken care of up top. So now we're gonna come up and over the frame rail and then just get it right about here. And then give it an extra inch or two just to be safe and cut. 
All right, now that that's cut, we can go ahead and we're gonna bring the truck down and then we're gonna take that line or rather what will be the length of the line. We're gonna take that string, tape it to our line and use that as a guide to get our cut. Now, of course, the string isn't always gonna stay exactly in place or be an exact measurement. We're gonna make up for that, putting our tape just a little bit off the end of it and then marking on the outer edge of the tape. And when you're cutting AN line, you wanna make sure you get a good clean cut, obviously. I test fitted this and the length is perfect. And then I went ahead and I got some grommets put in here in the bed that way, you know, that thin metal can't dig into this once we get back on the road and things start shaking around. We're gonna run this through and then we'll put the ends on this so that we can connect it at the compressor and at our reservoir tank underneath. First off, I'm gonna make sure these grommets are good and spread out. Work it in there nice and easy. Then just run it through until you got a decent amount on both sides. We're ready to get the hose ends on here. Getting these AN fittings installed isn't really all that hard. I know it might seem intimidating, especially if you've never done it before, but there's just a couple basic things you need to do this. Primarily, you need assembly lube and thread sealer. I like to put just a little bit of lube on there. And then I also like to take a socket just to get good press on there. Get a little bit of a twist. Make sure it goes on there straight. You want it so that you're almost up to it with the line itself. And then we're gonna be using the tub method for the thread sealant. And get it started by hand. You wanna take a little bit of tape and you can wrap it nice and tight up against the back of this end of the fitting. That way, if it starts to back out while you're tightening this down, you'll know it and you can start over. I like to leave it on the connections before testing. That way you can see if you got a leak, it'll start to bubble out. Now that we've got one fitting done, we just get to do that seven more times. That way all of our lines are made and then all of this will be connected. All right, we should be just about through. There we are. All right, let's keep going. We're about ready to get this line connected here. That reach is perfect so far. So now that we've got it run and connected to our tank, we know that it's not gonna need to change in length. There we go. We got our first bag connected, and that means we still have three more to do. And we're starting to run a little bit short on time today, but I really wanna see this thing working before we have to get out of here. So I think we're just gonna make a little bit of magic happen here. Hmm, whoa. Hey, that actually worked, which means that this stuff must be working now, and there's only one way to find out. Looks like we got an air system, but we can't call it done quite yet. We still have some clearancing we need to do, like Ben mentioned before, so we're going to have to call it a day for right now, but we're going to send this thing out to get some specialty work done, so next time you see it, it's going to be just a little bit different. We'll see you next time. Today on Music City Trucks, our Lo-Fi S10 project goes out to see a specialist to get in tune with the 90s with a fully custom audio system. Then we get an inside look at what it actually takes to design and build that system. Then we go pick it up and test out the system. Oh my gosh. And we were surprised at their attention to detail. iconic design. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Eric Smart. And I'm Mark Chris. And it's finally time to bring back our mini truck project. This is our Lo-Fi S10 that we're building. And as you can see, we're not in the shop because it's time to do some audio. Yep, and audio is way outside of our usual wheelhouse, so we're here at the Outlaw Garage in Columbia, Tennessee to see an expert who can give us a hand. Check it out. Hello. You must be Joey. I'm Joey. I, nice Good to meet, meet you. you. Mark. Mark. Nice, nice to meet you. meet you, Joey. Heard a lot of good things about you. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. What we'll do for you? 
Well, we were hoping to get a little bit of help getting an audio system put in. Hey, we're all about that. Seems like the right place to go. Do you mind if we take a look around? Yeah, come on. We're a full custom audio shop. We do a lot of Rockford Fosgate product, anywhere from our motorcycle stuff that we have here on this display. We also have back in the back, we have a lot of the Marine stuff that we do for the boats. We also have power sports too, for side-by-sides, things like that. Let me just show you some of the stuff we have up here. This is our Rockford line that we do. We do have different levels of amplifiers that we can choose from depending on what you're wanting to do. Uh, I've got some different levels of speakers that we have from, the, from these guys also. Uh, anywhere from a lower end all the way up to a high end and anywhere in between that we can do. Okay, so yeah, so we told you we have a project. Didn't tell you what it was. It's a 95 S10 mini truck. We were hoping that you'd be willing to take it on. Is that something hey, that you, you want to do? I would love to be involved and go look at it and kind of get an idea of what we can fit in there. Glad we found you because we want this to be done right. Well, we do appreciate it. We'll take care of you. Let's go and load the truck. Right. Well, while they're out there unloading the truck, I figured I would check this thing out. It caught my eye. It looks like the entire back seat is removed permanently. And I don't think those are bookshelves in there. I think this thing's gonna be a pretty serious system. I need to ask Joey about this. Either way, this is gonna be a really cool truck. Well, this is it. Well, that's a good platform to start with. <laughs> we have done many of these trucks in the day. Yeah, so let's just give you a little update on, on what the project is and where we're going. So okay. it is a mini truck, so it does have suspension. We've already installed the air suspension on the truck. Uh, it's got a full back half, five link air suspension. Uh, it does have bags in the front with the shock mounts relocated as well, so it does lay frame. We're also going to later on do a tonneau cover and uh, wheels and tires, and that's pretty much it. And we're hoping to connect the dots and bridge all that together with okay. with your help on the interior and the and the sound system. Any kind of ideas on what you guys were wanting to do stereo wise? Okay. So we had a little bit of an idea, you know, taken from the '90s mini truck style, maybe like a blow through or something okay. like that. Something that's going to catch attention. Well, that'd be perfect, especially if you're going to be doing the tonneau cover instead of having a camper shell on the back. Then we could actually do a cut through in the back. That would probably leave us a little bit of room to do some stuff behind it. We just need to get some measurements between the back wall and where you guys do have the fender well cuts. So we can see what kind of depth we've got and kind of come up with a box design for that. Sounds like you're going to have your hands full, though, so we should probably get out of your way. Sounds fun. We'll leave it with you. All right. Thanks, Joey. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you. Started out as an installer, but like I said, when we opened my own business back in 89, obviously I had to run the shop and do installations. Still like being the installer. I don't like being the salesperson as much because I just like to get my hands dirty. Mm -hmm. Through the 90s was just phenomenal for car audio for us. I think the industry in itself was that way. Crazy now, I mean, here we are, 2023, the mini truck season is blown up huge. We're seeing a lot of that older stuff coming back, which for me, I love it because it's what we were doing and we were in it as that stuff was coming out. We as a company want to be known as doing the older stuff. When we first talked about the truck, I knew y'all were going to be doing an air ride system on it and you were going to do the tubs and all in the back. So we started looking at the blow through setup. Well, I got to looking at playing around with some of the parameters that we were left with instead of doing a huge cut through and having all the speakers mounted, we went back to like that bandpass design that I was telling, talking about earlier, where we've got a, a, a three chamber box basically. We got woofers in two sealed chambers firing into a common chamber, and then we cut a huge hole in the middle of the bed, and it's right dead center of the truck. So this way, because we're doing bucket seats in the truck, that kept everything right in the center, and it gave us some room to put the amplifier still on the inside of the truck and the way you guys had laid out the tanks and the bags and the stuff pieces in the back, I wanted to keep all that showcased like it was and not have our stuff all mixed in the middle of it. So I decided let's put our amplifiers inside and put them behind the seat. Coming up next, we check in on our Lo-Fi S10 project and give you an update on the progress. We did get the box built. We came up with a design for 212 and a band pass. Well, it's been a few weeks since we stopped by Outlaw Garage to check in on our Chevy S10 build, so we decided to stop by and get a progress report. Oh, hey guys, how's it going? Good, we're just checking on the progress on our truck here. Well, we've got a few things done since the last time you guys were here. Uh, what we started with back here in the back where you guys already had all the air ride stuff going, I knew you wanted to put the screen back here in the back, so we actually made a little pod 
that we could actually put a controller in. It'll be secured down right here. We got all the wiring run down through the bed to kind of keep everything just real clean and uniform back here in the back and neat out of the way. We did get the box built. We came up with a design for two 12s and a band pass. This is actually a piece of plexiglass, which right now I still got it covered because we want to scratch it. But we've actually got three chambers. There's a 12 on either corner firing into the center. And as you can see, we've actually got the port already cut through the back of the wall. We've already done all the matting and stuff underneath the carpet all the way up the back wall. Got the factory panel back in. Right now we're getting ready to work on the back panel. We've got the head unit in. And it's kind of a good thing you guys are here because I got some questions about doing this back panel and how we're going to cover everything. What you got? Well, I've got, wanted to find out from you guys if we're going to do be kind of the color, if we're going to be staying with the kind of colors that we've got on the inside. That way I can kind of figure out on the, where the panel's being made. I've got some inserts that we can do that we might can do, use some of those same colors in. Well, that was one of the big things that uh, we tossed around was, were we going to change the interior over to like full black or a completely different color or stick with the beige and, um, you know, that's just so much work trying to change the entire interior color. Maybe we can embrace the beige and then tie in the black. We'll get some black seats, you know, and then okay. use both colors. Let me show you what we've got. Okay. This is actually the back panel. I've already started on it. We're looking down at it right now. This is actually behind the driver's seat. This will be behind the passenger seat. Oh, I see. This is where the hole comes through. This is water. actually the port. Yep. So what we've done, I came in and made another insert piece here that's going to go at the top. This will all be attached to this panel. It'll be all vinyl wrapped. And then we'll actually have these two pieces I've actually done with, with acrylic. So the amplifiers will be mounted on this, but they're slightly larger than the amp. So you'll actually see from having a backlight on the back that we're gonna put, it will actually light up on the corners. This is the actual piece of plexiglass here. And at this point, all we'll do now is go back and sand and polish the edges. That way the light will transfer out the sides. That's fancy. So we have to attach this back wall to the back and keep it from vibrating. So I had to make some access places for some screws to go in the little pods I made. So by putting these inserts in here, we can actually bolt this piece in and then we'll actually have panels that we'll actually have and we can do these in the actual color of the tan. Mm, and okay. that will bring the tan material color back into this so it's not just all black back here in the back. Yeah. It'll give us some of that goldish color to go in. And then these panels will basically just be pressure fitted in. So if we ever had to service anything, you don't see any screws anywhere. Wow. Everything's completely hidden. Panels will pop out, we pull the screws out and work from there. Yeah. So it's gonna look good, it's gonna function well, right. and it's gonna be easy to service right. if you have to. Right. Hopefully we won't have to. But So I think that's really cool how you're using like the lighting and the plexiglass and you've got things like this is gonna be floating almost. Right. It'll look like they're actually floating by the time because this will be painted black so you really won't see these. Just like now if you're looking down you don't see them. But once everything's blacked out it's really gonna be dark and that's when that light comes on it'll really just reflect around it. And having the black on the background, it'll reflect the light better than having the goldish color back here. That's why I figured we tie in those on the accent pods. Well, now we've got all the new LED lighting out now. It's all more efficient. Wiring is a lot smaller. The wire is flexible now. We can actually bend the lights around stuff. So it gives us a lot more opportunity to do some stuff with lighting that we couldn't even do back then. I couldn't even imagine this kind of stuff, much less execute it nor do we have the tools. So this is why we brought it to you. So I guess we'll leave you with it. We'll get you some upholstery, okay. get you the seats, and then uh, we'll, we'll leave you uh, to do your thing here. Looks Sounds like good. you've got a good grasp on this. All right, appreciate it. Thanks, Joey. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Appreciate See it. See you soon. Next up, our sound system is nearly complete, and Joey gives us some insight into his process and a history lesson into this part of the industry. Deep in our Lo-Fi Chevy S10 project, and Joey from the Outlaw Garage is making great headway and getting our top-notch audio system installed. Well, we got, we got our box now. We ended up cutting our panels back shorter just to kind of box everything in to still expose all of the back-end work that you guys did at the shop. Did the plexiglass window where you could see down in the top. Obviously, the box is ported into the back. And we made some different inset panels, so now we can go in to service it the panels will be removable where we can take them out. And we did three different pieces just to make it a little bit simpler versus trying to bow a big panel to go back in the back. We also added this front piece here that if you can see in the writing, we will actually have your logo in just like we have on the top. 
Then we've also come back and we're gonna go add one more ring inside this that we will actually cover with the tweed material like it's on the back of the amp wall to tie in the colors that we're doing. And we'll possibly even do the same thing back here on this back side where the logo is. But now the box is all complete, so now it's just a matter of taking the pieces back out, putting some leather on them and putting them back in. The Outlaw Garage installed a PMX 80H head unit that they got from Rockford Fosgate. I like this piece because it's just a simple radio. This piece would work perfect because it still does Bluetooth. We can still plug in USB and still play music and stuff the same way. It still looks cool. It still even has a backup camera input on it. But at the end of the day, it has a good output. It sounds good. And to watch all those things still change throughout the year, but then you're still dealing with a line that started over 40 years ago. And the doors, we're gonna do the Power Series, six and a half. It's still not their top of the line speaker, but it is one of their higher end line coaxial speakers that we're putting in the door. We're doing a four channel amp to drive all those four speakers, so we're gonna have plenty of power to drive them. I still want a good, even flowing sound to where it still has a, a, a good mellow tone, where if you wanna play rock, you can. If you wanna play rap, it'll play rap. If you want to play old Merle Haggard country, the old type stuff, it'll still play that. And that's what we really try to instill in, in this build is try to do something that still sounds really, really good, but we didn't have to put a ton of stuff in there to do it. And that's the whole thing I wanted to kind of do behind this without going crazy with a lot of equipment, but build something that can still do both ends of the spectrum, if you want to call it that. So we asked Joey where he sees this industry heading. The 90s was probably the biggest for car audio to ever be out there. Oh, we got some mini trucks in here. Yes, sir. So I really feel like with what the mini truck series is doing, and, the, and even with the OBS stuff, but mainly the mini truck, because it, that just seems where the focus it is right now, that is still in the game to this day, making product that still will do the same stuff that it did back in the day. We all know there's CNC machines and 3D printers out there, so why does Joey still mostly do it by hand? My grandfather was a woodworker, and he loved working with his hands. I'm the same, I'm, well, I did mechanic work as a kid growing up before I got into this. I just like building stuff with my hands because when I get through, I can say, hey, I built that. I used to build boxes with a jigsaw, just because I just love working with a jigsaw. I like to build stuff like that, and I like the sanding. I like the putting it together. If we want to build a template, now we can go in with a router and we can copy that template. We can copy that template 200 times, and they're going to be exact. You've been doing this for over 40 years. What keeps you going, Joey? I guess a lot of just my passion. I just like doing what I'm doing. And as long as my customer picks it up and they're tickled with it, that's the payoff for me. We partnered with TMI Products and they stepped up and provided us with the vinyl fabric that we used on our stereo components. As well as their Cruiser Collection bucket seats. Now these are a nice upgrade if your factory seats are in disrepair or if you want to step up to a sporty seat that's affordable. Very impressive. Well, just finished up the inside, got the TMI seats put back in, everything's all buttoned up, ready to go, everything's level, everything works like it needs to. Now we're on to the back, I got just a couple of small little details we're gonna change up back here in the back before the guys pick it up. But when they get here money to pick it up, everything should be ready to roll. Coming up, our S10 Audio Systems install is complete. Wait till you hear and see what they did. It will blow you away. I cannot wipe that smile off my face. Well, this is a very exciting big day for us because today's the day we get to pick up our truck. Yep, Joey gave us a call, said he's got our audio system done, so let's check it out. Joey, how's it going? Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Good we're glad to be here. Glad y'all are here. Well, I think we got you guys ready to go. I was hoping you'd take all the bedazzles off, but I yeah. guess. Yeah, hey, we were going to, but I thought it's leave it because it's kind of cool looking. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, let's see what you've done. Come on in, let me show what we've done on the inside so far. Whoa. We got the seats and all in from TMI. We got all the speakers in, we got the head unit in for you guys. We did a console piece in the center, a factory piece. We actually mounted the controller for the air ride system is on there and the base knob is up in the front where you can actually get to everything pretty easy. Then we've also got wow, all the amps are mounted on the back wall. We added some plexiglass with some lighting. You see the center is actually where the vent is for the sound to come from the back end of the front. Man, it, it looks factory. Like it looks like it's supposed to be there, like we the tried console to, and all that. Yeah, we tried to keep it clean and simple, not over the top, but something that would still blend with the seats. I love it. Still stand out with what we're doing. No, I think it's great. Yeah, it looks awesome. Let me take you back here to the back, show you what we've done back here. All right. You remember on the air ride system, we ended up making a little controller piece because that's the Bluetooth controller for the air ride. Uh -huh. So we've got it mounted back here in the back. It's secure. Everything's tied down. That looks good. And outside of that, we got a little surprise for you on the box that we did. Okay. See if you can see this. Whoa! <laughs> oh, that is awesome. That is yes. too cool. We went ahead and did the little blow through, like we did the glass on the top with the Rockford logo, uh, since they're one of the sponsors for giving us some of the equipment and stuff that we did. We wanted to tie something else in on the back, and I wanted to put your guys' logo on there. But after we got started playing around with a few things, I'm like, look, we got a little picture window back in the back. We're going to add some Hot Wheels back in the back. Dude, that That's is so cool. But if that you notice, awesome. we've got a mini truck for the S10. Yeah. We've even got the Fall Guy truck, as you guys just did that one on one of your episodes. Yes. And then I know you like old school trucks. We put an old school truck in it. Dude, that is so cool. That is definitely not what I expected. I've never seen anything like that. I don't know what to say. Yeah. This is, this is better than I could have ever dreamed it. This is why we brought you the truck. Well, got one more thing for you, too. Okay. Like to never found it, but we finally found one little S10 pickup. And we thought since you guys were gonna be doing the paint job and maybe doing some graphics and all on it, you might could even have the truck painted to match the truck. Oh, that so we thought be that would awesome. be kinda cool yeah. to go with it. That's yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, or maybe we should just paint this truck purple to match yeah, that. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> that <might> easier. easier. <laughs> well, I think I mean we gotta see how it sounds now. Let's listen to it. Let's do it. Ugh. Wow. All right, and we got the head unit up here at the front. Like, so we've got your USB is actually mounted in the console. You can plug a thumb driver, plug your phone okay. into it. Cool. We've got it set now. So if you want to, just start turning it, hit the little play pause button. And you turn that volume on up. And keep on going. Get on up to about 25. 25? All right, now take your bass knob and turn it up. Oh, we're not even. All the bass is turned down. Whoa. Bring oh, my God. <laughs> I'm amazed by how crisp and clean it's the really sound like, is. Just having six bigger four mids and highs and two subs, I mean, it's really, really clean. It's a nice blend. It's like not overwhelming bass. I mean, the bass is insane, but it balances out. You can out. still like, hear the music. Yeah, you can still hear the music. And it doesn't rattle or shake. Right. Yeah. There's, and with that blow through, we ain't even going to need AC in this thing. Why not? Just turn the bass up. <laughs> yeah, I was watching your shirt go. Every, everything that you did is just awesome. I mean, you got the air controls in here, the base knob, the head unit, everything you did in the back, it just looks amazing. Well, we appreciate it. We want to do something kind of cool for you guys, and I think it turned out really good. Joey, uh, I can't say enough good things about it. Knocked it out of the park. Uh, we, we, we really do appreciate you only got inviting us to do this with you guys. It's been, it's been a pleasure for us. We love it. Well, well I guess we're going to have to probably Get this thing loaded up and get out of here soon. Yeah, I mean, we got to get it back to the shop and get it ready for shows, because we got to show this off. Hey, let's get it done. All right. Well, let's jam out a little first. Yeah. I cannot wipe that smile off my face. That's too good. Let's get this thing aired up and loaded up and get it back to the shop.
Today on Music City Trucks, our lo-fi project is close to laying frame. But first, we need to add some finishing touches. And we clear the way for this frame to hit the ground. Plus, we'll give it some extra stopping power. And we'll strip these ugly accessories off and buff and polish for a brilliant finish. iconic design. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Eric Smart, and today, as you can see, we finally got our S10 mini truck back here in our own shop. Now, the audio system is finished up, thanks to Joey down at Outlaw Garage, and it might look on paper like this is a proper mini truck already, but we, we've still got a lot to do. Yeah, on paper it's a mini truck, but in person it's definitely not. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously all of the accessories need to come off. We're going to address that today. Uh, we've got some loose ends that we need to tie, tie up on the suspension, mainly the wiring. Uh, we've got a nice big upgrade for the steering, and then we've got some trimming, adjusting we need to do to get this thing where it'll go all the way down and lay frame, and that's what we're going to get done today. All right, well, I've got the frame cleaned up because we're gonna need to do some welding. Now, if you'll remember when we installed the bags, we had to remove the shocks because we installed the airbags where the springs went and the shocks went up through the middle of the spring, but we retained these shocks because we're gonna reuse them. Uh, we do need to run some shocks on this. Now, it normally bolted to the lower control arm using this little flange here, this little T-bolt flange that um, was pressed through the bushing, but I went ahead and pressed that out and I've got this bolt uh, pressed in because we're gonna bolt it to the back of the A-arm here. And for the upper, we just made this out of some angle iron. So we're gonna get it mounted. We'll do a little mock up here, figure out where we need to weld this bracket on the frame. Now, since we've got it at full droop right now and I've got the shock fully extended, let's get it up there and get an eyeball and then we'll get it compressed. Not bad. Okay, we're gonna run it through full cycle. So, and we still have got, you know, maybe three quarters of an inch up here of shock travel, so we don't have to worry about that. That's good to go. Now we're gonna move on to installing the level sensors. Well, I mentioned earlier, we need to wrap up some wiring and mainly what I'm talking about are these level sensors. Now you don't need these for your air suspension to work, uh, but with this AccuAir system, it's so smart that when it uses these, it can self-level for you, or you can push a button and it'll bring it up to the right height you want. Um, it's actually got the wiring harness built in here, the pigtail, so we need to just get this thing mounted, get it connected, plug it in, we'll be good to go. You've got different options for holes. It actually is normally longer than this, but I went in and cut it off because I'm gonna use this hole right here. So I just need to figure out where this is going to mount. With the standoff they provide, it'll come out where it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole there. I'm actually going to leave a little extra because we're not quite at full bump. And then I'm going to measure from eyelet to eyelet. Five and three quarter. All right, well, we're not past the limiter here. So we're still in good shape up top. I want to cycle through the whole movement to make sure there's not any binding or overextension of the uh, sensor. Well, because of the style of steering on these S10s, one of the major problems with lowering these trucks, especially when you're gonna lay frame like we are, is the steering geometry. Now, uh, it's got kind of an older style steering, you know, with a pitman arm and an idler arm, and then of course all of the tie rods and everything. The Problem is when you go really low on this, they like to tow out. So if you're gonna ride at a lower ride height, typically have a tow out problem, which causes tire wear, drivability issues, and things like that. But thankfully, uh, Little Shop Manufacturing has this entire steering kit here. It's really nicely manufactured and totally adjustable, heavy duty, rod ends. And even better than that, it's a direct bolt in to the factory stuff. We just need to pull this stuff out, put this stuff in, kind of correct our steering problem. That, going in the scrap bin.
All right, that's done. Now that Mark's got our remote shock mounts finished up on the front and all the ride height sensors installed, it's time for us to move on to get this thing as low as it can go. To do that, we're gonna need to make sure that everything underneath is above the scrub line. Now, what is a scrub line and how do you find it? This right here at the top side of your straight edge is gonna be known as your scrub line. That is the lowest point of your frame and that's where everything needs to be above so that you can actually lay your truck all the way out. The exhaust is also in the way up here. See, nice and easy. Looks like that cross member's next. All right, with this cross member all sandblasted and cleaned up, I went ahead and marked out what needs to get cut off. So all of this down here is gonna get completely removed and then we're gonna weld in a plate to reinforce it once all that's gone. So now I'm gonna cut a plate to weld in there and then we'll be ready to put it back on the truck. All right, well, we've got all of our welding and cleaning up done on this cross member, but we can't just go ahead and throw it in like this because obviously it would just get straight to rust in the minute we took it outside. So to make sure that doesn't happen, we headed and got some POR15 three-step rust preventative system. Now it comes with your cleaner, your prep, and the coating itself, which is guaranteed to not chip, crack, or peel. First step is to wipe down your surface with the degreaser to get it nice and clean. All right, now our second step is gonna be using the metal prep. Now, this is gonna make sure that we get good adhesion from the coating itself. I'm just gonna pour some out into this cup here. And after you brush it on, you're gonna wanna let it sit for about 10 to 20 minutes. Now we've got our prep done and washed off. It's time to actually put the coating on. And we're gonna go ahead and apply our first thin coat. This stuff prevents rust from recurring by protecting the metal from further exposure to moisture, and it's made in the USA. Once the first coat is applied, let it sit for about two to six hours, add a second coat, let that dry, and it's ready to go. Coming up next, we get rid of these pesky dents and dings without breaking the paint, or the bank. We'll be using a whale tail, and that actually slides between two panels. Well, as tempting as it would be to go ahead and lay this thing out now, we can't do that yet because there's just not enough clearance with these wheels and tires, but our new wheels and tires are gonna be here soon. But the time has come for us to do what we, and I know you, have been waiting for. Yeah, it is finally time to remove all these absolutely awesome custom accessories on the outside of this S10. Awesome's not the word I would use, but <laughs> it's gonna be very satisfying doing this. You know what helps with these? What's that? Heat. These accessories don't use the best double-sided tape, I'll tell you that. This is the worst double-sided tape I've ever had the displeasure of working with. I'm gonna work on this hood scoop. Wow. Well, it's just the most useless. Is this one of those things that somebody's mother tells them, you're such a diva and they think that that's a compliment so much that they put it on the windshield of their vehicle. What you doing back there, Eric? Uh, I gotta get rid of these rhinestones because I don't think they're really gonna fit in with the truck once we're done with it. Uh, now it's time to move on to getting, looks like the original badges off of the doors here. There was some double-sided tape. It's probably stuck better than this stuff up on the fender was. We're gonna be using this eraser wheel. And uh, looking at it a little closer, it looks like it said SS. I don't know if that means this truck was originally an SS truck or if somebody put SS badges on it or what, but either way, it's gotta go. So the thing with this, you just wanna keep it moving. If you stay in one spot, it'll burn through. And we definitely don't wanna do that. All right, it's gone. Well, getting all of the flashy accessories off of there surely made this truck look a lot better. Now, we did have big plans to do a big fancy paint job on this truck, but we're kind of running out of time and we don't want to shortchange something like that. So what we'd like to do is get the truck looking as good as we can without breaking this paint to kind of restore the current state of paint job. Uh, and we're gonna do that with several different things. One is going to be paintless dent removal. To do that, we've got 
the guys here from Indents. Now, PDR is a very specialized skill that I don't have. So I'm gonna get out of the way, let these guys do their thing. The first dent I'm gonna tackle today is this sharp dent on the cab corner. And for those that are not familiar with our business, it's, uh, it's nothing like conventional where you have to, to grind and sand and use body fillers to repair the dent. We actually access the dent from behind if possible and we use our, uh, our tools that are specialized in the industry to push the dent out from behind. It's kind of like uh, give it a massage to get it back up to factory specs. A particular tool that I'm using is in the industry is called a whale tail. And, and that actually slides between two panels and I use the leverage of the inner panel to push the outer panel back into place. And in the process, I use the reflection of the PDR light to see the depth of the dent and the process that I'm moving it back into place. Traditional repair would be to grind this off, to use body fillers and refinish it. But with this method, you maintain the factory finish and the longevity of the vehicle. It's like the dent never, never even uh, occurred. Our company basically does hail damage. We uh, service body shops all over the southeast. Uh, doing hail damage repair for insurance companies. Yeah, just like uh, using the traditional stud welders, I mean, you have to grind the paint off, weld the stud on. This, you don't have to mess up your factory finish. You can literally just glue these right on, you know, with a little time and patience, just lift everything back out to the original form and blend it out. We're gonna put some glue tabs on here today, a soft knee print. It's a glue that will adhere to paint without uh, messing up the paint or the temperature will not mess up the paint. And as it bonds to it, it will stick to it. And you can, like I said, you can take the lifter and it will, it will raise it up and you can watch the metal actually contract. And we'll grab a mini lifter. Get that little pop. And there you go. Next up, let's get these calipers out of here. We throw some new brakes on our S10 and finally reveal our new wheels and tires. These things are the quintessential mini truck wheel. Well, our mini truck's coming along nicely. Got the wheels and tires back off because we're going to address the brakes. Now, normally when we go with EBC brakes, we talk about something that's high performance or something that's gonna help you stop when you're pulling a trailer or something like that. With our mini truck, we really don't need that. We just need a good set of OEM style pads. So EBC's got these Ultimax 2 brake pads and they're basically an OEM brake pad, uh, but with the quality that you expect from a product like EBC. It's got the break-in uh, coating here to help you break the pads in properly. It's gonna have low dust, zero metallics in here, so it's gonna extend the life not only of the pad, but also your cast iron rotors. Speaking of cast iron rotors, we went with EBC's BSD Sport Rotors. Now, this is very similar to the regular USR rotors at the grooves that help expel the gas and the brake dust. Now, as for the centers and the hubs here, they're all Geomet coated black, so you don't have to worry about them rusting over time. You just need to get these things installed on the truck. Well, let's get these calipers out of here. Oh, these pads, whew. This is a good uh, example of some pads that have seen their uh, best days. If they cracked here in the center, that means they could uh, unadhere from the, the backing plate. And you can also see these have metallic, they have steel inside of them. And uh, that's what is really hard on your rotors. But on the EBC pads, uh, they put a knurling on the back of the pad to keep the pad from becoming unadhered from the, from the backing plate. Get this dust cap out of the way. Let's see how loose this is. Oh yeah. I think we're gonna go ahead and put some new bearings in here anyway, while we're at it. Cause if they've been in here as long as those pads have been on here, stands a reason they have been. All right, well, I'm gonna retain this washer and castle nut but I am gonna install some new bearings. I've got new outer, inner, and the little axle seal. I'm gonna go ahead and get the inner bearing packed first. That way I can get that in, get 
get the seal installed, get the rotor on the truck. You can see how that grease pops up in between those rollers. That's how you know you got it all in there. Ooh, we're good to go on this one. Onto the truck. So the idea with these, you don't want it to be real tight because then there's gonna be too much tension on that bearing. But you do want to tighten it so that it seats properly and then back it off until that groove in the castle nut lines up with the hole for your cotter pin. Yeah, so these are the Ultimax pads. Basically this OEM style pad, but they're gonna be low dust. So they're gonna keep our fancy wheels clean, which we'll be showing you later on. All right, that's all it is for that. Get the other side done we can get our new wheels and tires installed. Oh, what you got there? Well, I figure since you got those brakes done, it's about time to get the wheels and tires put on. Oh, look at those things. <sighs> yeah, I mean, Billet Specialties doesn't get much more 90s mini truck than yeah. that. Yeah. Then we got the Continental Extreme Contact Sports. That way the tires can match. We should, yeah. they probably wanna see. Yeah. We got these from Summit Racing. And this is actually a modernized version, this GS53. This isn't the original design of this wheel. It is the same center, but you can see on the rears that you've got there, they never made them that wide. It, it did successfully lay frame. Dude, that's a mini truck. That's a real mini truck. I think we did it. Coming up, we buff, wash, and shine this baby up. It's nice and smooth. Then we lay it all out. Well, this, aside from getting the grill, the mirrors, and the taillights put back in, this truck looks like it's just about finished up from 20 feet away. Now, if you get up a little bit closer, you'll see, regardless of the fact that we just washed it and had the PDR done, there is still a lot of spots on this truck that are gonna need to be touched up. You know, we've got some stains, we've got a couple spots that are scuffed and scratched, and we just won't be able to get that out with a hand wash. And I think that driver's bedside is just about the worst part of the truck. And that's where I'm gonna be starting. This has got a few scuffs and scratches on it. I think we can take care of uh, with some products from Sonax. As a matter of fact, we're gonna do a one stage buff on this, which is gonna buff and polish, and we're gonna be using Sonax's Ultimate Cut. So this is a very dynamic polishing compound. It's actually for cutting and buffing. Uh, what it is, is it's a fast cutting compound for polishing sanded or severely weathered paint. It's an odorless water-based formula with low dusting and no silicone. Now, as for the buffer, we're gonna be using this Flex Series Orbital Buffer that we got from Sonax as well. And for our pad, we're gonna be using the Hybrid Wool Purple Pad here, which is also a really diverse piece of machinery. All right, well, one great thing about white paint is it hides a lot, especially when it comes to light scratches, which this truck has a lot of. The bad thing about that is It'll go a very long time without being cut out because they're easy to hide. Um, down the side here, this truck has been used as a pickup truck, as it should be, uh, for a very long time. And there's a lot of little scratches right through here. You can't really see them very well, but if you listen, there, there are uh, some contaminants on the outside of the paint that could be contributing to that. Uh, but also there's a lot of scratches in there. And this Ultimate Cut and the Hybrid Wool Pad are gonna take care of that. It was only about maybe 30 or 45 seconds in that little spot right there. You can already see a lot of that gloss coming back out through that paint. And it's really gonna brighten that up. And if you listen, it's quiet. It's nice and smooth. 
and do that to the rest of the truck. And we can take this thing out, give it a final wash. This truck's gonna look brand new. Well, with our polishing done, we wanna protect that beautiful shine. And we're gonna do that with a quick wash using Sonax's shampoo, and then follow that up with some spray and seal, which we spray on with the vehicle still wet. Final touch. Well, there you have it. I gotta say, it's done. Yeah, I mean, we might not have gotten around to that paint job we wanted to do, but yeah. you can't always have time for everything. And we did touch a lot of bases that you need to for a mini truck. We got the custom wheels. We got it notched and bagged and slammed. We got custom mirrors and grill, the sound system. I, I would say very comfortably this qualifies as a proper mini truck. Yeah, and I'm gonna be knocking that off of my bucket list. I love it. Well, we slammed the truck. You wanna go slam a few? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Next up, we finally take our S10 out for its first drive and see how we did. Doesn't ride all that bad, actually. <laughs> Well, I mean, I got it on the road. Yeah. It doesn't ride all that bad, actually. No, I mean, you think mini truck, you think it's like, oh, drivability is just like, <laughs> but it's not bad. I mean, it still runs good. We didn't mess with anything under the hood. So we're safe there. Bags are working great. Uh, sound system is awesome. basically like a stock truck. Having it at ride height, it's really not, not that much lower, I don't think, than stock. Yeah. Right in the bags are very forgiving. You know, like air suspension has, typically has a good ride quality. When you came on board, we were working on the, the square body, which I know you loved. Oh yeah. And then you found out, oh, by the way, we're doing a mini truck. How'd you feel about that? Just off the bat, be honest. I mean, I was a little surprised. You know, th this definitely isn't my style. I do like S10s just because they're good, reliable old trucks. But I, you know, I've always seen them more as beaters than something to build. But I'm pretty surprised by this one. You know, it, like I said, not my style, but now that I've built it, been around mini truckers, I can definitely appreciate the builds and the community a lot more. You know, we've met some of the nicest people along the way. You know, Ben helping us out, Ben Osborne, uh, Joey at the Outlaw Garage. You know, I mean, it's just like everybody's wanting to help each other out. It wasn't just, you know, help with finding parts and stuff like that. It was advice too on yeah. how to do this because neither of us has ever built a mini truck before. Right. So it, it was really nice to have people who have been doing this for a while, you know, offering up their expertise and tips and tricks and everything on how to do this the right way. Like Ben came in and, and dove in and helped us actually physically do work on the truck. It yeah, just says a lot for that community. Now we're at the end, looking back, what are the boxes you have to check? It has to be slammed. Lay frame. You have to, yeah, it's got to be, it's got to be low. That's the drive shaft. <laughs> Real mini truck stuff. <laughs> Oops. What about the sound system? This is one of the most intricate systems I've ever seen and definitely one of the best sounding, especially for the fact that it's only a six speaker system. I would never have expected this kind of sound quality or just the loudness of it and the bass, it, it'll make your nose itch for sure. Uh, I think the seat upgrades along with the other interior trim pieces that we got from TMI, um, nice upgrades. Oh yeah, and then also with the fabric they sent us so that the, yeah. you know, all the rest of the upholstery that was done is tied in along with the seats. Yeah, and I like this, these cruiser collection seats. It's a nice entry level low back, sporty, 
narrow bucket that fits in here just fine. So it could fit in just about anything, really. Well, I guess now all that's left is to bid this thing a farewell. But before we go, we wanted you to know that Summit Racing has everything you need to build a truck like this. So if you just have a old S10 like this or a different type of mini truck laying around that you want to build, you can go to Summit and you can click one click, one part number to get everything you need to build a truck like this. They've got the full notch for the frame. They've got the full ride tech system if you want to go the full bolt-in route. Summit really prides themselves on having lots of different parts for different types of builds. And they put all of those together into what they call a parts combo. And that's what they've got for our truck. They've also got it for other Power Nation builds for Music City truck builds, like the Faux Guy and the Suburban, uh, but also for other builds on other Power Nation shows like Engine Power, Carcass, and Detroit Muscle. What's nice about that is it takes all the guesswork out. So if you're unsure about which parts to buy, well, you can just go check out the list. It's got everything right there for you with one click. So if you like this truck or the other trucks we've built on this show or any of the cars or trucks that you've seen on the other Power Nation shows, make sure you head over to Summit Racing and check it out and see about building one all for yourself. Coming up, we hit a local car show and the mini truck world is alive and well. Y'all built finally a proper one on TV for everybody to see. All right, well, we made it out here to Mule Town Motor Fest in Columbia, Tennessee, and the truck did great on the road, so we got it here set up, laid out, and I think it's about time we get it out and let the community see it. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's just as much fun to show this thing off as it is to drive it around. There's a lot of great trucks out here. I think this thing's in good company. There's a lot of mini trucks. I see a lot of big trucks bagged. There's a lot of other really nice cars and trucks here. Joey from the Outlaw Garage is here. They've got a full setup here behind us. I think we just need to walk around and check everything out. What do you think? Yeah, let's go. I had the brainchild uh, three years ago about putting this, uh, a different kind of fundraiser for our organization. And we came up with this uh, idea of doing the uh, a car show. And we partnered up with Parks Motors to, and they were able to allow for us to use their property. We kind of gear this more to a family fun type activity. It's free for the public to attend. You just come in and see the beautiful cars. And so we kind of really kind of gear it toward a family fun day. All right, so we're here with Spencer Meehan and his 86 C10. And you know, it, it doesn't quite lay frame, but you got her down there pretty low. I mean, what, what do you got done to it? Um, it's a, just air bagged and uh, C notched the back and cut the cups in the front to get it that low. Do you got a full clear coat on the whole thing, keep that patina looking good? That's actually just uh, original lacquer polished. You really can't argue with a square body no matter what you do with it. Tell us about your build. Uh, okay, it's a 2000 S10. Um, it's got a blazer front end, uh, Sonoma hood, full air ride, custom four link. What advice would you give to somebody who may be watching this that's like, man, I'd love to build a mini truck, but I just don't know where to start. Like, what do you do? Just get find a truck that you like, whether it be a S10, uh, Nissan Hardbody, uh, Toyota, something you like, people are so willing to help and lead you in the right direction and just take your time with it. Do it right the first time because it, it costs more to do it twice than do it right the first time. Yeah. Y'all did good. Y'all built finally a proper one on TV for everybody to see and it was great. I haven't found much of anything that was wrong with it. So y'all did really good from the wheels to the sound system, to the interior, everything's been good. Back in the day, I've had a few of those S10s. I always loved that body style. So, and then I knew some guys who slammed them and, and did some stuff. And I really like that look. And so this just brings back a lot of memories of things that, uh, that I used to experience when, when I had mine and wish I could do things like that, you know? Well, y'all probably remember Ben Osborne from Buddy's Garage. He helped us out from the very beginning of this build. You know, Eric and I had never built a mini truck before, as we told you, oh, which yeah. is why we brought you in as our expert. You guided us and really took all of the fear out of it for us. Uh, I truly enjoy and have a passion for helping people finish their goals with their vehicles. I think the truck turned out awesome. I mean, what it looked like when you guys brought it in, 
and all the work that you guys have done on it. And plus, I just, it's been just an honor for us to be part of it. I grew up um, in garages because my dad, you know, he had a shop in Meridian, Mississippi, where I was born. And I grew up, like, hanging around lowrider trucks and, like, listening to very boomy bass. And um, I feel like, in a way, that was part of, my, like, my own music education. This has been his dream as far as I know, his his whole life. So to see him still doing it and like excelling at it is really incredible. It's, it's inspiring. Well, it's been a fantastic day here at the show. Everybody's packing up, headed out. I think we're gonna do the same. Yeah, but before we go, special thanks to Tony and everybody here at Mule Town Motor Fest for letting us come out and show this thing off now that we're done with it. But, you know, we can't stay here all day. That's right, this time I'm driving now. Right out in style, let's go.